Hello and welcome to Box the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta and back for the third time since Box the Talk began 13 years ago in the compound of ISRO's headquarters, Antriksh Bhavan in Bangalore. Uh, behind me, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the founder of India Space Program, and my guest today, its current custodian, Chairman A.S. Kiran Kumar. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for agreeing to be on Walk the Talk and uh, congratulations for all the wonderful things you've done. Uh, launching 20 satellites in one go and now having two more launches coming up in the next couple of months. Thank you very much and it's indeed a pleasure to be part of your Walk the Talk which has already made a landmark in itself and I'm extremely happy to be part of Thank this you, sir, except we stay right here. We don't get launched anywhere. <laughs> we also stay here. We send <laughs> things up to make sure that we can have a better life here on Earth in India. So, sir, uh, as I said, this is the third time I'm here uh, with Water Talk. Uh, so, two of your predecessors have featured on it and each one's time marked a certain quantum change and growth in ISRO. Uh, how would you describe today's time? At today's time, you can say we have overcome certain critical technological limitations we had in terms of cryogenic technology. And also we have in a currently in a position where we can increase the number of launches, which is essential to meet our country's demands of using the space technology for Earth observation, for disaster monitoring, for communication, navigation, and also for interplanetary studies. So today we are at a juncture where we are able to significantly increase the rate at which we are putting satellites into orbit. This is primarily, of course, to meet our ever-increasing demands on the need. As you are aware, currently the government has put greater emphasis on use of technology for governance activity itself. So we have been able to provide a significant capability to the government in terms of geospatial technology, location-based services, navigation and communication. And particularly now as crop insurance and things come up. Yeah. So a lot of sort of evidence will be required for quick dispersals. One is that and another thing is both in terms of planning the activity and monitoring, right. monitoring to ensure that the projects go on smoothly and as the progress happens, even the dispersal of the funding for the projects can be done. Okay. So one of the very important activities which is going on currently is the Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme in right. Rega. That is being brought in with a very significant uh, geospatial technology and mobile application based uh, inputs for them to track all the MJ and Raga activities right. that's going on. Right. So as they say in that uh, security camera advertisement, Upar Wala sab kuch dekh raha hai. Ah, <laughs> this is truly the Upar Wala. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's a very apt statement now because there are a large number of things which can be now observed from space and as you are aware space has no boundaries of state or center right, right. state boundaries or national boundaries and so, space is a real estate that doesn't cost yeah, anybody anything right but if not uh, strictly true there are countries which are trying to make use of that as right. real estate also right <laughs> and th that's the reason india has to be there yeah right uh, would you say India is now there in the sense that India has planted the flag in outer space as much as the other big powers have? Yeah, definitely because we can say we even put a flag on moon. Right. The place where that went is called Jawahar Stal today, of course. But apart from that, both the Mars mission as well as the lunar mission, what we have done, has shown to the world that it is not necessary for us to spend a lot of money to do interplanetary missions. And missions which are not just for the sake of doing a mission, for example, though man had landed on the moon and there are a large number of probes going around the moon, it is to the credit of Chandrayaan-1 that water molecules and the processes which are responsible for water formation on the moon is credited to Chandrayaan-1. Oh, I see. It wasn't, it wasn't found until then. Yeah, it, was, it is given this particular mission which gets the credit for oh, I discovering see. that. Well, I, I don't think that's a well-known enough fact. Yeah, it's in, in fact, uh, it's a thing which needs to be appreciated, though right. we did our mission much later. Right. And we, uh, this mission also was actually in a and way... And these findings have peer review, global yeah, acknowledgement. Yeah, it's all, it has been everything. acknowledgement right. and it is Chandrayaan-1 which gets the credit for this. Right. We had also in this a number of uh, payloads coming from America, Canada, 
and also Netherlands, Europe. So there were a number of international cooperation activity also done on this. Similarly, on the Mars mission, you are all aware that Mangalyan, uh, Mangalyan which is the maiden in a country in its maiden attempt has uh, achieved insertion into the Mars orbit. And, and at a very, 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 low very price. significantly lower cost. And much more than that, I think what uh, the world recognizes today is that ISRO and India has made use of the space technology for actually bringing the benefits of space technology to the society and the general public. This is recognized world over and if India can claim number one position, it is in this application of space technology for societal benefits. So what Everybody is, the, recognizes what is the significance of two recent launches, including your 20 satellite launch besides the numbers and the two coming ones over the next two months? Yeah, see, for example, the recent one, the 20 satellite launch itself, of course, uh, gives us a capability and also establishes the PSLV's record because today more and more small satellite manufacturer builders have increased and they are not getting that easy opportunity to put the satellites into orbit. So PSLV fills that gap and that gives us a big credit. Then similarly, the last PSLV launch, we demonstrated one more capability that is, it is easy for you to put satellites into different orbits and different local times, which had not been done by us earlier. So this also gives these small satellite makers an excellent opportunity of doing in a single mission. Yes, ESLB is like a bullet train to outer space. Yeah, yeah you definitely. You can launch them at will. Yeah, we are now reached a stage about six launches per year we have done. This right. year we'll be doing right. six per year. You have 38 functional satellites now? 38 functional satellites. But you need a lot more. Actually, if we want to really meet the country's demands of Earth observation, communication, as well as navigation requirements, we need at least double this number what we right. have today. Right. So that's what we are trying to increase the realization of both the number of satellites as well as and the launch that capacity. Ma magic century, three-figure mark. A yeah, century mark on the sat uh, launch vehicles as well as the satellites. Satellite. We will be currently we have done 58 launch vehicles. Right. And uh, in terms of satellites, 79 for international market and about right. 33 for our own use, we have done. Right. So, sir, uh, this uh, last PSLV mm. also took some student satellites. Yeah. One we know about is uh, the Bombay IIT no, satellite. How is that doing? Yeah, IIT Bombay satellite, uh, actually we are waiting for the actual signals to come from that because uh, the way it is designed, until it reaches certain stabilization. So it is stabilizing right yeah, now. Yeah, stabilizing right now. Whereas another satellite which was launched from a university in Bangalore, that has, uh, is doing a good job. It has already done its three axis stabilization. Uh -huh. And we are And which university is this? This is PES. It's called PES University here. I see. Is that a government university? No, it's a private, private university. It's a private, private university. university. That's amazing. A private university is has able to do that. Which has beaten an IIT <laughs> Bombay satellite. Yeah, of course, uh, they had the advantage of many of the ex ISRO people working there as professors and guiding the students for this. Right. There are person from RF, the control systems and uh, mission, etc. And are they monitoring that satellite from their university now and getting signals there? Yeah, they have set up a ground station and antenna independently. But initially, we have supported them from our ground station at ISTRAC for monitoring and helping. That's a wonderful openness on part of ISRO, a government organization. Usually, you will be so suspicious of any private group coming no, together. One of the things what ISRO has been doing all along is capacity building in the country. Right. Say for example, even our Astrosat, which was launched last year, Astrosat had payloads realized in our academic institution, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Raman Institute, PRL, then Inter-University Centre for Astronomy and Astrophysics in Pune. In Pune. Yes. These are the yes. people who Dr. built... Dr. has featured Nardikar. on Walk the Talk, yeah. in fact. Yes. So these are the people who built those payloads. Though it took longer time, today Astrosat is considered as one of the extremely used excellent observatories on space and the kind of combination of payloads it has got in a single platform is already making news and it has found some newer things very soon you will be seeing in the publications and uh, other places from far uv to x-ray it has got a sensitivity which is much better than anything else available in the space today uh -huh. one of the far uv has a two arc second resolution compared to six arc seconds Sir, which is available break it down for uh 
people like me what yeah. is two arc second resolution yeah see for example if you look at an object object will have depending on its diameter and the distance an angular substance that means you can determine in terms of arc second angle the object size so now the resolutions when we talk of celestial object for example sun and moon if you take it's about half a degree or 1800 arc seconds right. that is the size of that right. so within that what size what smallest feature you can pick up is the resolution we talk of and this gives us a large field of view and a resolution which is much better than what is available today in any of the operating telescopes are there also are you also able to meet demands of defense for yeah. remote sensing and what we are building is basically a capability of earth observation and communication system this can be used by anybody in the country right. so all the people all the different government agencies do make use of uh, this capability how good is the, re the how good is the resolution that the best of our satellites can get we can get today multi spectral that means in more than one color you can see the images and sub meter resolution is possible today how do you define sub meter sir basically you can say an object feature of less than a meter you can see you can see you, you can see and uh, in odd light conditions or, or it's all these are all during day night day condition right. but we also had a satellite called rsat right. which can give us about a meter or about 3 meter resolution images at in night. without at night or any time of the day because that makes use of its own signal right it sends a signal based on the reflection like flash we have on our camera ha, right. same way the microwave it sends the signal and it based on the reflected signal it forms the images and the advantage of this is you can see through even the clouds like glass is transparent to us please don't laugh yeah. at me but is that what we call passive imaging no no passive imaging is when you take the picture of a camera without right. flash right. you are making use of sunlight as a natural right. light but if you take make use of flash then it becomes active imaging right. because you send the light right. it falls so in this case this is active imaging active imaging <coughs> thanks for not laughing at no, me no 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 problem because it's a matter which needs to be understood yes. see in other advantage of microwave is see when we look at our visual images if cloud is there in between you cannot see anything right cloud mass like we can see through the glass glass microwave can see through the cloud cloud yes so in space you can take images of earth in microwave wavelength c band k u band etc so recently we also launched one scatterometer which provides ocean wind vector information to the global weather forecasting community for weather forecasting models so this is again a very unique uh, which was launched just a week back you can say